This is Ray's Magnetic Circuitry, Part 1, The Lifter. I have a setup here. I have a pack of magnets, base magnets. They're my firing magnets, the power magnets. And they go in and out of a firing position. I have another setup here. I call it a flapper. I have one here. And it's a uh, magnet that's, uh, if I can bring it up there so you can see it, it flaps freely on an axis. So when it fires, produces power, it goes forward. And that's your north side. Okay. So I have this set up ready to fire. I'm going to pull my trigger and this will activate the firing. I have a small motor there and uh, it acts as a generator. So I'll go ahead and remove my trigger. <clears throat> we'll see if there's any force produced to fire the LEDs. <clears throat> okay, let me put it into uh, loading, load it into firing range. <clears throat> okay, now we're ready. Okay, I'll pull my trigger. And we have a firing. So the purpose of this video is that we are having a force generated here which puts a, produces a torque in the motor. This, this little motor is a, a half inch across, so the radius would be a quarter inch. So that's where that force, the torque is being produced to generate the electric power to do my five flashlights. They have nine LEDs in each one, that's 45 LEDs. They're not firing to maximum brightness, but they are firing. So the purpose is to see if I can move this arm in and out of firing position to resetting with very little little force and having a greater force to fire the lights. Also, I have a uh, little resetting weight there that resets it. There's a drag on the motor so it doesn't really come down freely by itself, so that's why I put that little weight there. Okay. So now what I want to do <clears throat> is see if I can take my uh, ounces and see exactly the ounces that it takes to reset it and also the number of force ounces to uh, to uh, put in the firing position out and in okay so right now we're in the we have fired it so let's see what it takes to uh, take it out of the magnetic fields and reset it so okay. <laughs> just barely come up to the zero mark there's a little bit of uh, play they have on the meter on this uh, gauge it just a, a little bit there that takes a little bit of force to come up to the zero <laughs> so anyhow we got up to the zero mark on my gauge okay now let's see what it takes to uh, put the uh, force or ounces it takes to put it into the firing position so i'll have my my ounces my ounce gauge and we'll Well, first of all, I need to put the little trigger in. I want to have the trigger so that it holds the uh, flapper to its position so it won't fire until I'm ready. Okay, now. There. Okay. 
door. And so we see there's just very, very little. So okay, let's see if that brought it into where we can fire it. I'll remove my trigger. Okay. So the action there, my flapper is reset, fired, reset, fired, reset, fired, reset, fired, reset, fired. So now the question was, how much force is actually being applied to that little generator? So if we can measure that uh, there's no force lifting that flapper, the same as there's just very, very little force to uh, take it out of the field and put it back into the field, then we don't have anything I call over unity, which is the purpose of this video. You can make up your own mind though. Okay, and just before, let's see, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. So, the, uh, as we say in there earlier, the radius is about a quarter inch. That's where the firing torque is. So I put on a small mark on my flapper magnet, a quarter inch out from the axis. So what I want to do is put my, my uh, ounce gauge here. Should be able to see that. Four, five, about five. About five. So that's about five ounces that it takes to have it fire. So we had little or just, I couldn't really hardly measure to there is some, there might be a drag there, but the way I set it up there, I have a uh, slot here that I can raise and lower. I have a slot so I can go horizontal. So I can get an exact measurement up and down and forward and backwards. There are a couple principles I'd like to go over that I believe makes this work. One of the first principles is second story magnetics. And I have a setup here that I'm going to demonstrate this. But you can see the flapper in the, in the uh, left hand that those magnetic fields are bumping against each other, the north to north repel. But as we raise it up into a second story position, we will see that the same uh, flapper will be pulled through instead. Let's go ahead and show this, demonstrate it. Okay. I have a uh, one inch by half inch neomagnet north facing up, like in the diagram. I have a flapper here, it's on a pin, which I'm holding, but it freely swivels back and forth in the magnet on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and bring it in to the uh, base magnet. And we see that it's being repelled. That's uh, north to north. But in the second story position, it changes the story. Go ahead. See how it pulls through? Let me get a better grip. And it looks like the north is now attracting the north, but really on the uh, other side of the flapper is the south. So in the second story position, that south is pulling on the north of the bottom. So it's really attraction. So in the lower position, they push, repel, but in the in higher, they actually attract. So anyhow, that's for 
a long time, I had that difficulty in making any kind of over unity developments, uh, which I had some success before, but I never understood the principle for sure. So that's the second story magnetics. You gotta have it, if it's not working, then you have to raise it up a little bit. Uh, second principle, uh, these are principle, magnetic principles of over unity. There again, you can make up your own mind. Uh, this is a 45 degree magnetics. And if you notice, on a magnetic field as it loops around, there's a portion that is in line here with your base line. It's made at a 45 degree angle. Okay. And what happens in your uh, first story magnetics, first story, these lines from your flapper coming up, they grip and then they don't allow it to disengage but at the second story, it seems that these lines are, are more where they slip and they slide through. And so there's no gripping uh, to the left or the right, but there's still a pulling forward. That's where your flapper action is. That flap that goes up, but it does not grip. So it's a very, very small force to uh, take it out of the uh, force field where they force uh, fields. Uh -huh. So they grip in the first story, they grip and they don't let it loose, but in the second the uh, lines are more, uh, these are more straight up and down, they don't curl around when you're farther away, uh, and so they slip and they slide in that combination. So here's the diagram for my magnetic circuitry, part one. The lifter, it's actually lifting the flapper, but not gripping it. So I believe that's where the uh, over unity uh, development is being done. And there again, you can make up your own mind. Okay, so it's on an arm. I have an arm there going back and I'm gonna put it back into position so we know it takes very little to go out. I'll put it, my trigger in. We know it takes very, very little force to uh, reset it. But there is a large force that triggers it. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to visit my Buy me a coffee. Uh, buy me a coffee. Appreciate it. Any amount would be helpful. Okay. Enjoy your inventing. Thank you. Until next time.